Let's talk about an uncomfortable truth. That popular debugging tactic, where you jump straight into the version control history and scan recent commits when your build pipeline fails, feels effective. But in the long run, it's hurting your project badly. Let me explain. When researching how other software engineers think about this dilemma, I came across a blog article by Martin Fowler, yes that Martin Fowler that wrote this and many other great books, where he calls this tactic diff debugging. He also describes a systematic way to apply it effectively. Here's the basic flow. First identify the last screen build, the point where the feature was still working, and note the corresponding commit. Then identify the first red build where the feature stopped working and note that commit as well. Now apply binary search across the commits in between. Pick the commit in the middle, check it out locally and see whether the bug is present. If it is, that commit becomes the earliest bad one. If it is not, that commit becomes the latest good one. Repeat this process until you find the guilty commit. To optimize this workflow, take a look at git bisect, which automates exactly this process. And if testing a commit takes too long on your local machine, consider offloading the work to your build farm by triggering your pipeline with those commits. So far this sounds nice and simple. But even in the short term, this tactic can become problematic. If failures are not reproducible, this approach does not work at all. If the tests used to determine good versus bad are slow, it quickly becomes inefficient. And if commits or integration chunks are too large, it becomes very hard to isolate which specific change actually caused the issue. In addition to these short-term challenges, there are two major long-term issues with this approach. Issues that, in my experience, hit every project sooner or later. The first one is this. Diff debugging is not an investment. Every time you use it, you essentially start from scratch. You might personally get faster over time by recognizing recurring patterns. But the system itself does not improve, the team does not benefit, and the engineers who join later will struggle just as much. In contrast, every invariant check, every meaningful error message, and every logging improvement is an investment. It helps everyone, with future root cause analysis in similar areas, ideally avoiding the need for diff debugging altogether. The second issue is the opportunity cost this approach creates. Now imagine facing a production issue instead of a fresh regression. Are your release cycles small enough to apply diff debugging in this situation? For most projects, I would guess the answer is no. In that case, you must rely on the feedback your system gives you. Exception messages, call stacks, often without useful line numbers, and whatever logs you currently have. If diff debugging becomes your default strategy during development, you miss two critical opportunities. Learning how to interpret your system's feedback and improving that feedback when it is insufficient which makes root cause analysis much harder for yourself and your team in the long run. So what do we need for a sustainable, long-term strategy for debugging and issue analysis? We need to design our systems for analyzability, just like we have learned over the past two decades that we must design for testability in order to write good and reliable tests. Designing for analyzability starts with a simple habit. When writing new code or changing existing code, actively think about what could go wrong. One of the simplest and most effective tactic here is design by contract. We make preconditions, postconditions and invariants explicit in the code. This not only helps with error analysis by producing better exceptions, it also makes the code more explicit and easier to understand. A useful generalization of design by contract is the principle of failing fast. In practice this means for example not swallowing exceptions and not silently ignoring invalid inputs such as null. Instead, fail the system in all cases you cannot safely recover from. Do this by throwing exceptions, logging errors or reporting the problem back to the caller clearly and explicitly. And when you fail, fail with precise information. Provide a message that describes the problem as clearly as possible. Add context, such as inputs, state information or environmental details. Anything that helps you later to understand the root cause of the failure. If you cannot put all this information directly in the exception message, write it to the logs instead. Of course, we cannot predict everything that could go wrong upfront. So what matters most in the long run is this discipline. Whenever the system's current feedback is not sufficient and you need to fall back to diff debugging to understand the root cause, ask yourself. What information would have helped me to understand this faster? What would help the next time something similar happens so that I don't need diff debugging again? And then go ahead and improve your logs, invariants or error messages accordingly.
Last but not least, improve analyzability by adjusting your development process. Add questions like the following to your code review checklist or your definition of done. Are errors swallowed or are they handled explicitly? Are error messages understandable and do they contain sufficient detail and context? Is additional useful information written to the logs? As so often, what is convenient in the short term turns out to be a shortcut that hurts in the long run. But dogmas don't help either. Success comes from finding the right balance. Use diff debugging locally for your own changes while things are still in progress. But if you believe something should work and the test still fails or the system behaves unexpectedly, switch to improving the system's feedback even if that takes longer than scrolling through the commit history. Over time, this leads to error messages and logs that are so clear you no longer need to reproduce a bug in order to fix it. Use diff debugging as a fallback when you have no better idea. And when you find the root cause that way, have the discipline to improve your system's feedback afterwards. And if you are now curious about alternative debugging techniques, check out these videos.